Hello and welcome to this presentation that shows a number of custom transitions based on the cropping options within PTE AV Studio. I will provide a link for you to download these transitions to use or adjust as you see fit. They're all based on a similar idea and you'll get the idea of what they do as we go through the video. The animation options used mostly in these transitions are rotation. Incidentally, the same techniques which we're using here as custom transitions can be used in slide styles too. Now the basis of this technique is within PTE AV Studio. We use the crop functions in the objects and animation screen to cut an image into a number of slices, panels or strips. Now we can use as many as we wish but when you get up to something like 20 they're a little bit difficult to handle within the screen but manageable just. But we can certainly do it much easier with four or five crops of one single image. Of course each time we're cropping a slightly different part of the image. So we may have 20 images, each image is cropped and each crop is a separate slice which need to be assembled within the software before we apply any animation. But of course when we add the rotation and here you can see we've used just five panels or strips we can create some memorable custom transitions or slide styles. Let me break down the techniques with five copies of one image. What we need to do is to crop five separate vertical strips or panels from each of our image copies. We crop 20% from each image, but it's a different 20% from each. So that when we place them all back together, the five panels make up just one image. We can use more than five panels, of course, but I think that's going to be enough for our demonstration here. If you want to use this technique to create a slide style, you can do so directly in the objects and animation screen where we are now. But if you want to use the technique to make a custom transition, then you need to go into the objects and animation screen via slide options down at the bottom left. You'll need to select the transition tab at the top left of this window. And we need to manage transitions, create a transition, and then edit. And you'll notice the objects and animation screen opens, although it just has a couple of holding images for us to work with. Let me close back away from this and we'll come back to our objects and animation screen. So I'm going to need five copies of this balloon image. But any animation that I may apply it's also going to require a speed modifier and I think smooth is probably the best option. So if we were to select smooth for this image for pan, zoom and rotate, then we have all bases covered. When we copy the next four images, the same speed will be copied too. It just saves a little bit of time. So let me do that before we go any further. You can see I've got the keyframe highlighted on the left hand side. So if I go to the add modifier for the pan, animation speed, I'm going to choose smooth, but I'll do the same for the zoom and also the rotate. It could be that I'm not going to use all of these, but once the speed option is applied, then if we don't use it, it's not going to impact on our animation. So I'm going to go ahead and make my five copies. I'm going to use keyboard shortcuts of Control C to copy, Control V to paste. So with the image selected, Control C, I'm going to click into the bottom right corner just to remove the selection and hit Control V. And I'll do that enough times 
to create all five. It may also be a good idea to rename these. So with the first one selected, I'm gonna to go to my properties and I'm just gonna name these one to five. And I think I'll put a gap between the title and the number so we can see things more clearly. And I'll continue until I've done all five of these. It's not essential that we rename these five images, but it may help as we go through the video. What also may help if I just temporarily turn off the images we're not working on. To do that, I'm just going to reduce the opacity. So if I select slide two to slide five, and I'm using the shift click method, hold the shift key and click at the bottom, you'll notice over on the left hand side, we can see four of the five keyframes. So if I select the top one, hold the shift key and select the bottom one, I can reduce the opacity of all five, sorry, all four of those slides by going to the animation tab and just dragging that down to zero. So all we're viewing now is slide one. It may make things just a little easier to follow. To crop all five images, we're going to need to start with the properties tab above. Now it follows that each of the five panels will make up 20% of the image. So starting on the left of the image, we would have to crop the first panel 80% from the right. So let me put a tick in the image crop and a little panel will open up. And here I can click and drag here to change the value or, which I think is slightly better here, just over type the value with 80. Now, when we do this, the image appears in the center of the screen. This is just the default way that PTE AV Studio presents images to us. It now sees our 20% strip as a whole image. So we need to move it via the animation tab and pan X. What we're going to need is minus 80, which puts it back into its rightful place on the left hand side. Let's take a look. Back up to the animation tab then. Now we can use click and drag here. And as I drag it to the left, as I get close, you can see exactly what I need to do here. And again, I favor the method where I just over type the value. So minus eight zero and the image is back in place. Now, while we're still in the animation tab, we may as well turn on slide two and get that ready to make the crop there. So if I select slide two, I can just click and drag over the letter A, or I can just double click and it'll reset it back to 100, or I can right click and reset 100. You can choose any method you like. But as you can see, we can now see slide two in its entirety. We need to go back to the properties and I'll click the image crop because here we need to crop 60% from the right and also 20% from the left. Let's do that. So 60% from the right, I'll just over type the value, 20% from the left. There you can see the panel. It looks about the right size. But once again, we can see the image is placed in the center of the screen. So we need to go back to the animation tab and pan X. Here we need a value of minus 40. So back to the animation, I'll just over type the value minus four zero. There you can see exactly what we're doing. Let me go down to slide three and I'll reset the opacity and back into the properties and I'll select my image crop once again. Now, I guess you can see where we're going with this, but let's proceed with panel three because this one needs a crop 40% from the right and 40% from the left. But this one doesn't need to be repositioned because it's already in the center of the frame. So we need to jump to the animation tab, select slide four, and we can bring up the opacity 
back into the properties and back once again to image crop. So the fourth panel needs to be cropped 60% from the left and 20% from the right. But now when we go to the animation, the pan X needs to be a positive 40%. So I'll just dial that in for zero. And we've got one left to do, so let's turn on slide five, double click the opacity to reset it, back into the properties and the image crop. So this fifth panel is cropped 80% from the left. Now that's a complete reversal of panel one, which we cropped 80% from the right. The pan X that we require here is 80%. So let's put that in place. And now we have all five images cropped, but they're presented as if we're looking at just one. Let me click into the box to remove that bounding box. And there we can see them all. The techniques we need for this cropping is very much the same if we are making a custom transition or a slide style. Because I've gone directly into the objects and animation screen, we'll consider this a slide style, but as I've said, the techniques are very much the same. What I'd like to do with the five images here is to clone the keyframes of each. Now we can speed that process up just a little bit. If I select slide one and hold the shift key and select slide five, if I select the top icon for slide one on the extreme left, what I can do is use keystrokes of Alt Insert. Now that produces a clone. Then if I hit the down arrow, you can see the cursor actually, or you, the selection there, jumps to slide two and I can do the same again. So it's quite a quick process to do all five. Then if I hold the shift key once again and select just the second keyframe, if we wanted that up at the end, which is probably likely, you can see we've made a clone of all those keyframes pretty quickly. Now I'm going to click into the bottom right corner, which will remove the selections on all of those images and keyframes, because I just need to select slide one. Remember that's the 20% on the extreme left. We can see it highlighted with that bounding box. The tricky part of this technique is the image that sits behind this one here, because what I intend to do here is to rotate it. So when we rotate around, we need to have another image on the other side. So let me just reset that. I'm going to select slide one at the top, right click and choose to add an image. And I've sorted out another image here, another balloon image, which I'll double click. Now that looks a little bit odd. Well, what we have to do with this is to crop it exactly the same as we did slide one. So we need to go to the properties, to the image crop, and if you remember, this one was 80% from the right. But while we're in this section, the properties section, there's something else we need to do. Just below the cursor, you've got two little boxes which say, show the front side of the image, show the back side of the image. Well, when this image spins round, I don't want to see the back side of the inside of the balloon, the blue one. So I'm going to untick that, but we can still see the image. So what we also need to do is to go to the animation and we need to use rotate Y to turn that image around. Now, what I need is minus 180 And if I select slide one now, and I just simulate a little bit of animation, there's the image on the reverse side. So let me reset that by double clicking the Y. What we've got to do now is do the same for the other four parts. 
So select slide two, right click, add an image. And of course we're going to add the same image to each, but we need to do exactly the same as we did with slide two now with exactly the same settings. But the only thing that's different is we need to place a rotate Y of minus 180 so that everything lines up nicely. So as I've got the reverse side of slide two selected, let's follow through. I'll go back to the properties and my image crop. Remember we gave 60% on the right for the second part and 20% on the left. We need to remember to untick the showing of the back side. Then in the animation tab in the rotate Y, I want minus 180 and all appears well. I'm going to carry on and do the other three parts in exactly the same way using the same settings as we used for slide three, four and five. So with all five images done and the images placed on the reverse side, what we need to do is to test things to make sure when all five of those panels turn around, then the image they display to us is correct, because this is the area where you're likely to make a mistake. So I want to select slides one to five. I can do that with the control key, hold the control key and select them all. But I also want to select the keyframes on the left hand side. The bottom one is selected. I'll hold the shift key and select the top. So I've got them all. Now I can go to the right hand side. And if I just click and drag over rotate Y, then when I get around to almost 180 or thereabouts, my image should look correct. And I think it does. Well, the first thing that I need to do here is to go to my rotate Y and reset that because I just used the keyframes over here on the left to demonstrate the turning around of the images just to make sure everything worked. But in fact, if we're going to put animation into slide one to five, we need to select the keyframes on the right. So I'm going to go to the ones on the right, select the top one, hold the shift key and select the bottom one. Go up to my rotate Y. I'll just right click and choose minus 180. So putting my cursor back at the start, if we press play, we can see the animation. But of course, it's all rather slow. So we would almost certainly want to change the location of those keyframes. Now where we're going to put them is a personal choice. But remember, you can select them all together, which is pretty convenient. So I could have all of these images or the, the images we can see on screen on screen till let's say around about five seconds. Then if I select the M1, I could have them taking about a second and a half. Let's see how that looks. I don't have to go right back to the start. Remember from this point to this point, we're going to be seeing the image here. But when I press play, now the turning around is going to be a little bit faster. And I think you probably get the idea. Now, if you was going to make a slide style of this, first thing you should do is just go to one of the slides which you're seeing at the start, one of these. Just go to the properties and make sure that the main object is listed as one. Then go to any one of the reverse side and tick the box to make sure that the main object is listed as two. Now you can make a slide style of this and apply it to as many images as you wish. What I'd like to do here is select slide one, two, three, four, and five, holding the control key. Now we know that this string of five keyframes are the starting point of the animation and the next five are the end point and our rotation is in a vertical way. If I select all of these and we go back to the animation tab, 
what I could decide to do is to double click the rotate Y and I could right click and apply it in a different way. But of course things look a little bit wrong now. So what I would have to do is select the reverse side images in the same way. Clear rotate Y and I've forgotten to select all of the keyframes and seeing just one change there was a clue. So let me just put that right by holding the shift key. So double click the Y and apply it to pan X. Now we can have a look if I press play. Remember this image will appear on screen until about now. But of course what we can do is stagger how all five sections rotate. Now what I mean by that is once again let me go to my slide one, two, three, four and five. We could have all of these starting at a slightly different location. We're all going to choose something different and we may have to experiment a little bit to find something that works. But maybe we could just for a demonstration purposes if we just stagger these a little bit here and I'm not doing this in any scientific way as you can see I'm just using my eyes to stagger those few let me put the cursor there and press play and I think you'll get an idea of exactly the sort of thing we can do the rest is really down to our own creative thought and trying one or two ideas one other option we may wish to consider is applying all of our images to a frame. So we could, if we wished, animate the frame in a slightly different way. That's an experiment I'll leave to you, but I'll just recreate it here. I'm going to click down in the bottom right corner, right click and add a frame. Then I can select all of my images in one go right click and choose cut don't worry we haven't lost anything if I right click on my frame and paste I've got exactly the same animation we just created but now I've got it sitting within a frame we could add a modifier to the frame we could even move the frame but as I said I'll leave that to your experimentation Now the screen that I've just opened up is exactly the same objects and animation screen but this one I've opened up via the slide options and custom transitions and I've gone into the edit option. But you can see here that we have exactly the same technique that we just created as a slide style or for a slide style and if I press play here you can see exactly the same thing but here we've got different images because this screen reflects a custom transition and not a slide style. But you can see exactly the same technique even down to the staggered nature of the keyframes here. Now with the spinning round of the screen I have opened up the objects and animation screen from the custom transitions once again and over on the right hand side you can see exactly the same techniques we've just covered here maybe just a little more ambitious here we've got 20 copies of slide 1 and 20 copies of slide 2 so I'm going to press play to finish but it's exactly the same techniques we just need to experiment to find something that's appealing. What we also need to bear in mind, particularly with that last little demonstration, is when we're viewing the objects and animation screen that we've come to through the custom transitions, we're only looking at a two second slide duration here. So everything works rather fast, but once we've created our custom transition, then of course we can apply it in a slideshow with three, four, five, or as many seconds as we wish. Well, if you got this far in my video, you must be a keen audio visual enthusiast. 
Now this software, it's been a favorite of mine for around 20 years. And as a photographer and a Photoshop user, PTE AV Studio is the second program I install on any new PC after Photoshop. They just complement each other perfectly for my needs. I suspect it will be much the same for users of Lightroom too. Not forgetting that later in 2020, probably around August or September, the Mac version of PTE AV Studio will begin beta testing. So Mac users will almost certainly see a version for their computer around late 2020, probably more likely to be early 2021. If you're a YouTube viewer and you've enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to my channel. But if you hit that notification bell, YouTube will tell you whenever I post a new video. It's very convenient. Remember too that you can download all of these videos to your PC from my website. If you feel inclined, why not take a look at our photographic and audio visual forum too. It's all free to join and you'll find me and others there who share your interests. I'll see you soon.